In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a chain barrier completely procedurally using geometry nodes. The cool thing about this is you can use any guiding curve to then have a chain or a chain barrier uh, go across that curve. That includes closed curves like circles, and we have a bunch of exposed parameters like the gaps, the droop, and stuff like that. Uh, this is going to be what I would call a intermediate to hard geometry nodes tutorial, but I'm going to do my best to explain it step by step by step. Feel free to pause and rewind at any point that you find confusing or leave a question in the comments and I'm sure people can help you. So let us begin with that uh, disclaimer. Also, this video is brought to you by Shortform and I'm going to be talking about them more at the end of the tutorial. So first thing I'm going to do is in Blender, I'm going to take everything and delete it and add a guiding curve. So this is the curve where I want my chain barrier to go across. This can be a closed curve. It can be one that we edit on the fly. Um, and it turns out it can also be a dynamic one that changes. But uh, we have a curve. I'm going to go to geometry nodes and make this a geo nodes group. So we have a modifier on this curve that's geometry nodes. The first thing I want to do is I want to add in these poles, like one here, 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 and here. To do that, we need to do two things. We first of all need to model the pole, and second of all, we need to give instructions of where to put it on the curve. So to model the pole, uh, we're not going to get too complicated. I'm just going to do some basic modeling. So I'm going to start with a cube. I'm going to scale it up on the z-axis. Again, nothing too fancy here. Um, and I'm just going to add a couple of things, like a loop cut. This is not a modeling tutorial, just to explain that again. Uh, I'm gonna extrude this along normals just to add a bit of a content to this. And I want it to look kind of realistic, so something like this. And then another loop cut up here, extrude along normals, something like that. I'm then going to delete this uh, top section. Or I guess we just want to delete the uh, loop that goes here and the largest face and I guess this other loop that goes here. And then finally, I'm going to cursor to selected, I'm going to add in a UV sphere. So uh, this is the basic modeling of our pole. So you can do something like that, or you can make the sphere bigger and like push it upwards. Okay, this is our pole, you can model it better than me. The question now is, once you've modeled this, how do you put it along the curve? I'm actually going to hide this object. Uh, the way we can do that is you can instance on points, and those of you who already know what's going to happen can see the issue with this, but we can instance on points, so for every point on the curve, instance the chain link uh, or the pole, right, uh, which is just the cube. Um, those of you who expected this to happen are like, duh, of course there's only going to be two. Uh, this curve is composed of two points, two control points, so of course there's only going to be two of these. Um, instead, what we can do is we can take our curve and resample it, and now we can control the number of poles procedurally. So basically what's happening here is I'm taking my curve and making it composed of more or less points. And really the way you want to do this is by length. So we're saying for every point five meters or whatever, um, add a point. Um, and this is nice because it will on the fly add more. So let me just do something like this. It will on the fly add more points as we go. It's not going to be confined to 10 that it's going to stretch out, right? Every time we add half a meter, it's going to add a pole. And this, by the way, also applies to like circles and stuff like that. Okay, so we have our poles. The next thing I want to do is I want to use this curve to kind of make this drooping kind of curve which we can then add uh, chains to. So how do we add the uh, drooping curve? Well, uh, what we can do is if we can take our curve and split it into sections, like this is section one, section two, three, four, etc. We can say for each section, have a droop as it goes along that section of the curve, which sounds obvious, but not immediately obvious how to do. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our curve that's composed of some number of points, and I'm going to add some resolution to it. Because remember, this is a curve now of only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. So I'm going to subdivide this, not this mesh, but I'm going to subdivide this curve. Notice that when I subdivide the curve, it's going to have more points. You can see that in this control points, that list is going to get longer and longer and longer. 
it's going to have more points, but it's still going to have the same general shape, right? It still looks like there's one, two, three, four, five points. The thing, though, is for each section, there's actually 20, since we made 20 cuts, points that can, uh, can side, that comprise each uh, section. Okay, so think of this as five sections, or however many, depending on the curve, each section uh, composed of 20 points. What I want to do with this now, I'm going to move this stuff off to the side. We want to take the subdivided curve and make a droop. So I'm going to set position. I want to offset the position by the z-axis. So I'm separating this into x, y, and z. So the z-axis lets us go up and down. In other words, we want to make a function. Or not in other words, what we want to do is we want to make a function uh, that controls the z as we go along the sections. Okay. Um, one thing you might consider, one thing you might consider is using the spline parameter. Uh, so what this is going to do is it's going to increase um, along the curve. So in other words, the spline parameter starts at zero and as we go along the curve, it goes up to one. Um, so you might think, okay, we want to uh, turn this into five sections. So what you do is you take this, what you do is you take this and you multiply it by five sections and then you use a fraction to make it a uh, repetitive. And that kind of works, although this doesn't guarantee that each section is the correct length. It's just dividing it into fifths um, by the uh, spline parameter. Uh, we actually need something that's dependent on index for this. So this is kind of the right idea, but not exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the index, and this is what I, I'm going to use the index as a function to uh, droop the z. Uh, I'm going to take the index and make something similar to spline parameter, but that's actually index dependent. So I'm going to take the index and I'm going to divide it by the total uh, number of points on the curve. We can get that by using the domain size. So remember, we have this curve of five points. We're finally dividing it. I'm going to take, make sure to set this to curve. I've had a lot of issues where I forgot to do that. And I'm like, what is wrong? It's just a tiny setting. The domain size tells us the point count. Uh, since we're using an index, indexing starts at zero. So I'm just going to do a slight modification by subtracting by one so that our first index goes to zero and then one, two, three, instead of just having a whole number. Um, I'm going to divide this. So now we have something similar to the spline parameter when we connect this. It's still going from 0 to 1, uh, but now it's index dependent instead of like length dependent in some sense. So we have this. I want to divide it into a certain number of sections. So again, we use that multipli multiplication fraction trick. But this time, I'm going to multiply by the domain size of our resampled curve. So again, this is the first curve that says how many points we have. Okay? And again, I believe we still want to subtract one here. So I'm going to multiply by this. And then I'm going to send this through a fraction command. And again, make sure this is set to curve. When we do this, you can now see we have kind of the same kind of jigsaw or kind of like sawtooth pattern right? Uh, but now it's actually um, ending at the correct sections. I believe there's a difference. If not, you can correct me in the comments, uh, but this is at least the manual way to do this. But we don't want the sawtooth. We want each section to have a droop. We can actually draw this out using an RGB curves. So uh, the sections can start at the top, 1, 1, and then in the middle, they can droop, okay? And notice we can make any shape we want here. Um, but you just want a nice drooping shape. So what we've done here is we've taken the curve, the finely divided curve, and kind of made our own spline parameter that we divided into sections. And for each section, we're saying uh, use this z function to droop it. So we now take this and combine it with our previous thing. I notice you might have to do a bit of a transform here. So I'm just going to bring this up using a bit of a transform. Um, and now you can see we have this. So really the final part now is uh, taking this curve and um, this drooping curve and using a chain to turn it into like a chain, connect it to a chain, a chain barrier. But we need to model a chain. To do this, 
Uh, here's a super simple way to do that. I'm going to start with a curved circle. And I'm going to modify this using a set position. Anytime we want to mess with the position, you set position. We want to take the top half of this and move it upwards in, in some sense um, to make kind of like a ellipse. Not really an ellipse, kind of like a rounded rectangle in some sense. Uh, to do this, here's a cool little trick. You can use position. You can separate it. We care about this uh, Y component. Use that as the selection, and then you can offset it, and it will automatically work. Uh, this is because it's looking for where the Y values are greater than or less than zero. Uh, point is, uh, this is going to make our thing. And to actually turn it into a solid mesh, uh, what we can do is we can run this through a curve to mesh command using the circle as our profile curve. And to make it less insane, or less thick really, it's not insane, it's just large, uh, we can use our set curve radius and control the radius manually. So this is a individual chain. Um, I'm also going to transform this just down a little so it's actually centered. Um, so we want to do this by, what do we want to do this by? We want to do it by the uh, Z axis. And I believe I'm transforming the wrong thing. There we go. So if we extruded or set positioned it by 2.62, uh, it's going to, to move it back halfway, uh, we just take that and divide by 2. So negative 2.62 divide by 2. And that's going to be centered. OK, so this is now what we want to instance on the curve uh, with a bit more of a nuance there. So here's our curve object. What I'm going to do is I'm going to instance on points. And let me just take this uh, thing we made from before, our single chain, and I'm going to move it over here just so it's kind of more clean. Shift P to put that in a frame. We want to instance our chain. Uh, notice, one, the chains are huge, and two, there's too many of them. Uh, to make them smaller, bring down the scale. And actually, there does seem to be a good number of these. Uh, if there's not, you can uh, mess with the uh, divisions, uh, the subdivisions, remember from before. Uh, but I think this is pretty good. Uh, let me make it like a bit denser, and we can modify this later. Uh, these are not facing the correct direction. So what we can do is if we look at this curve, it's going to have a tangent. In other words, we're going to have a vector that shows us the direction of the curve. And if we use that to say rotate kind of along this vector, uh, then we're going to be golden. So I'm going to extract the curve tangent. I'm going to turn this into a rotation because right now this is just a vector. Connect that to rotation. And if you set this to the right thing, in this case it happens to be a Y, but it could be you know X, Y, or Z. Um, this is going to make it flow in the correct direction, I think. Yeah. I believe the uh, last step is we want to have this kind of rotated where every chain is like 90 degrees offset from the last one. Uh, notice if we add a vector to the rotation here, we can do a bit of a uh, spinning uh, kind of thing going on over here. And by the way, just in case uh, you want to have a high resolution for the drooping, but you don't want uh, many points, I just want to point out, pun intended, uh, that we can actually resample this again. So don't feel bad about resampling. And this will actually clean up our tangent a little too. Um, OK, so we have this. Um, we want to rotate every other one. So like I said, remember, when we add in a vector here, we can rotate on the x-axis to get this. Um, I believe what we want to do here is we want to rotate by the index, which almost gives us a good-looking thing. You can almost just use this. But if you want it to be a bit more accurate, we're going to take this modulo 2. So we're going to take every other chain, and we're going to rotate it. So you can see they're almost offset by 90 degrees. That's not exactly what's happening here, but visually that is what's happening. Now you can see there's a bit of a gap here, which indicates that this gap actually tells us how many points we need. So I'm just going to bring this down until they're basically touching. 
and this is our uh, proper chain. Uh, one thing I'm noticing here is that we have um, kind of extra chains that are bulging out. Uh, there's a couple solutions to this. Uh, one of them is, I don't know why I have all these stats here. Uh, let me get rid of that. Is that Alt R? There we go. Uh, one thing we can do, and this is kind of an easy fix, is we can scale up our sphere. And I would actually recommend this <laughs> so that we don't have to do anything fancy uh, to hide the chain. Um, another thing you can do is you can take the chain and transform it downwards a little. Uh, but what I want you to notice is the way we have this set up is as we extrude this, it's going to add more chains. And uh, remember, our very first uh, resample curve from before is going to basically dictate the density of these. And the chain is always going to, in some sense, work. Um, if you want it to be more accurate, um, you'd want to resample this by length so that it works just like the other one uh, with uh, any kind of gap distance. So I'm just going to do that. And now you can see on the fly it's creating the correct number of chains. And this happens to work with a closed uh, path, uh, which using other methods is kind of difficult uh, to do. So I feel like that's the essence of the tutorial. There's more minutia about how to make it look good. Again, uh, the drooping is controlled by this. So you can create kind of like a custom shape uh, over here and you can have each one randomize the droop and stuff like this. But I think that's the essence of it. Uh, so at this point, what I wanted to say is that uh, this uh, tutorial, the uh, project file, is going to be available on Patreon, so you can download that if you are a patron, and I want to thank all the active patrons. Um, and this video is brought to you by Shortform. If you don't know what Shortform is, it's basically a website, it's a platform uh, that lets you uh, look at basically summaries of books and articles and stuff like this, kind of the most popular ones, in a very condensed easy to read. Uh, people have like intentionally uh, rewritten these things shortly uh, so that you can process them um, as fast as possible. Uh, short form is great for reviewing a book that you read, or maybe you don't want to read a book and there's various reasons to do that. Um, you don't want to read it, you just want to get the summary. You can get a chapter by chapter breakdown of uh, what's going on in the book or article. One book that is summarized on short form that I would recommend is Atomic Habits that tells you how to break your life down into these individual like little habits that you can kind of improve over time that creates this cumulative uh, increase in wh whatever direction you want to go in. So you have all these habits, you kind of do these minimal optimizations and they all combine together. Shortform is also always adding new content to their uh, platform, and that's basically based off of a vote system where people are saying, I want this to be added, I want this to be added. They take the most popular ones and add it as well. And uh, if you want to try out Shortform at a bit of a uh, special offer, special discount, uh, you can use my link in the description uh, to save on uh, your Shortform subscription. So check that out.